Hi, my name is ASAP. A S A P. Always say a prayer. Hi, I'm Olivia, and we have so much fun discussing the four stories. So shout out for Jesus. Yes, the boys and girls learn so much about Jesus and God and how much He loves us. God, from whom all blessings flow. I'm Sister Gwendolyn Ellis, one of the children's Sunday school teachers. Good morning, partakers, family, guests, and friends on this Resurrection Sunday. To our pastor, Reverend Winfrey, joint boards, executive team members, director of Christian education, Reverend Barbara Smith, all of our teachers and parents of our children's shout out to Jesus ministry. We're getting ready this morning for our first virtual 2021 Easter pageant of Partakers Children and some friends. Our scene number one will be our Partakers Babies as they will come with easy Easter speeches for youth. It starts out with our narrator, Armani Simon. Youth number one, Willie Simon. Ava Bradfield, youth number two. Peyton Lee youth number three, and Tiana Jackson, youth number four. All right now, children, hear ye them. Easter celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We celebrate the grace given to us by Jesus' death on the cross and the marvelous miracles of resurrection. Jesus. Jesus is alive. Hi, my name is Ava. I really like candy, but I like Jesus. So, um, uh, happy Easter, everybody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bye. We are forgiven. Go, put your hands down. We are forgiven. Thank you, God. My little partakers, little big people, how are you? Happy Easter to each and every one of you. I am so excited for what you're doing for the Lord on this day, knowing that he died and he rose again just for you. Your parts are just awesome. You're doing an awesome job. We know that you can't beat God given. The more that you do for him, the more he gives back for you. This is Deacon Ellis saying, I love you. And remember, keep the Lord first in your life and you will never come in second. Bye bye. On the day of his death, soldiers surrounded Jesus and treated him terribly. Hail the King of the Jews, they snickered, as they pressed a crown of thorns onto his head and hit him over and over with a staff. But Jesus was silent. He didn't speak up as they told lies about him or laughed at his pain. This was the very reason he came into the world. Jesus would give his life to save the world from its sin. Like an innocent lamb, he was led to his death. Jesus was forced to carry his cross up a hill called Golgotha, which means place of the skull. It was a horrible place, and there Jesus was hung on a cross between two criminals. Those who passed by shouted insults at him. He saved others, but he can't save himself. If you are so powerful, come down off that cross. But Jesus wouldn't come down. He had chosen to die. He had chosen to love the world so deeply that he would give his life away to save it. 
As Jesus got closer to death, the sky became black, and from the darkness Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Shortly after, Jesus cried out again, and then died. At the moment of his death, there was a violent earthquake. Inside the temple, the thick curtain that once separated a holy god from sinful man tore from top to bottom. These events terrified the soldiers who were there, and they confessed, This has to be the Son of God. Late in the afternoon, Jesus' body was wrapped with cloth and placed in a tomb. This tomb was carved from rock, and a huge stone was rolled over the entrance. Jewish leaders remembered that Jesus claimed he would rise from the dead after three days. They feared his disciples would steal his body and claim that Jesus had risen. These Jewish leaders demanded the tomb be made secure. Roman soldiers were ordered to seal the tomb and stand watch outside of it. Three days later, early in the morning, two women who had been followers of Jesus went to see the tomb. Suddenly the earth began to shake beneath their feet as an angel came down from heaven and rolled away the stone from the entrance of the tomb. The angel shone like lightning and the Roman soldiers standing guard fell to the ground like dead men. But the angel proclaimed good news to the women. Jesus is not here. He is risen. Hurry, go and tell the disciples. The women ran from the tomb, astonished at what they had just seen. Filled with joy, they ran to tell the disciples what the angel had said. Suddenly, a man was standing in front of them. Good morning, the man said. The women realized that it was Jesus standing before them, and they fell to his feet and began to worship him. Jesus told them not to fear, and then he told the women to tell the disciples to go to Galilee and that he would see them soon. Later, the disciples went to the mountain in Galilee where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Jesus, they were amazed. The disciples, filled with joy, worshipped him. Jesus was alive. He had risen from the dead just as he had promised. Jesus then gave his disciples a very important mission. Go, tell the world the good news about me, make disciples, and teach people to obey my commands. And to this very day, the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection is being shared around the world. Two will be brought by individual youth and juniors, and they will recite their Easter recitations. The first one is Ilea Bradfield, Easter in My Hand, Hermione Simon, The Meaning of Easter, and then Daryl Carter at Easter. Easter in my hand, there's a rainbow in my hand, full of colors that are bright. They remind me of the Savior who was born on Christmas night. He left the throne in heaven to forgive the sins of man. The candy from this egg will unveil his mighty plan. The purple one reminds me of the sin that's in my heart. It separated God from man and drove them both apart. The red candy reminds me of the blood that Jesus lost when he went up the hill and died upon the cross. Then Sunday morning came and the stone was rolled away by the orange light of sunrise. Christ arose on Easter day. Green is the color of new life in the spring. It tells me of the new life that knowing Jesus brings. Yellow is the color 
of the gold that lines the street and heaven up above where Jesus will meet. The rainbow, the rainbow in my hand says that Jesus died for me. The Savior in my hand, in my life, says that now my heart is free. The meaning of Easter. Easter means different things to different people. For the people that believe in Jesus Christ, it's about love of God and Jesus Christ. To me, Easter means E is for everlasting life. God promises to everyone who has faith in Jesus Christ. For people who follow the word of Jesus will get to live with God forever. A is for all who believe in the word of Jesus Christ. His lessons and messages are meant for all people living on earth. S is for sacrifice. Jesus Christ gave up his life to pay for sins of all people. Because he loves us, he gave us something important so we wouldn't have to. T is for trust. If we trust in God and Jesus, we can live a happy life. Trust means being sure that God and Jesus will be there for us even when we can't see them. E is for eternity. God says we can live forever with him if we follow Jesus Christ. And eternity never ends and includes when we're alive and after we die. R is for resurrection, which means Jesus came back for the, from the dead to lead the people. By doing this impossible thing, he showed us all that his messages and powers are real. Romans 8.11 says, If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you mortal bodies through the, his spirit who dwells in you. This is what Easter means to me. As Easter brings hope for a joyous tomorrow and out of the depths of despair, so may this day banish from you every sorrow and make you feel free as the air. While hearing grand anthems that swirl into the sky and breathing sweet lilies perfume, may you feel assured that your soul will not die as life does not end in the tomb. Good morning, my Partakers family. It is such a joy to be here this morning, Resurrection Sunday. I'm so excited. We have so many young people who attend our Shout Out for Jesus every second and fourth Saturday, and they are presenting their Easter speeches and their monologues. I'd like to thank the parents and the grandparents for allowing the children to come out to fellowship with us. And I'm so excited and so glad to be a part of this ministry. So just continue to sit back and enjoy the rest of the Easter celebration. I love you. Excellent, young people. And great job. We're back with our last scene, number three, brought on by our juniors and teens. They will be doing a four-part Easter monologue skit. It's called, We Have Seen the Lord, and it's taken from John 20. Mary Magdalene, The Spoken Word by Taylor Johnson, Peter by Jonathan Stewart, Thomas, by Angelo Lacey, and John by Robert Ellis. Thank you for coming. Sit back and enjoy. I've seen the Lord. You don't look surprised. You're probably thinking, Mary Magdalene, of course you've seen the Lord. You walked with him daily, but that's not what I mean. I saw him risen, alive. You don't know how I felt when he gave Mary and John to each other. Who did I have? No one. I was there when he said, I'm thirsty, and they gave him a swab of vinegar. What could I do? Nothing. I was there when he said, it is finished. Who would have thought it would come to that? A dead man on the cross, God forsaken. Was this the glory he had intended? Was this God's way of acting? God forsaken, alone and lonely. As the daughter of Jerusalem, one thing I've learned was to mourn. I loved him. I followed him. I would stay with him when the Sabbath was over, of course. I thought the worst had happened until I got up and went to the tomb that morning. The stone had been moved and they couldn't even leave his body in peace. Surely the master deserved a proper burial. Later, I wondered why I hadn't walked right in, and instead I went to tell the others what they had done to our teacher's and friend's body. Peter and the beloved ones left, running, but I couldn't stay for long enough 
to return. So I set out again. Why, you ask? To cry, of course. Near the last resting place or to find out where he was taken. Now I had the courage to look in and two messengers guided us. Would you ask a visitor at a grave why she's crying? I was so lonely without Jesus. He meant everything to me. The gardener came and he asked the same thing, adding, whom are you looking for? Looking for? Just a body to give it a proper burial. It's been desecrated. And then a wonderful thing happened. He said, Mary, nobody knew my name. No one knew me that well and loved me enough as Jesus. And he said, Mary. And he told us once that he calls his sheep by his, their names and his voice. I said, teacher, master, I wanted to cling to him forever, but not to enter such a despair again. But I couldn't. His words were beautiful. Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them that I am the way to the Father, to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Equality, love, unity. He was with us. I've always stepped on where angels fit the tread, you might say, but I'm a rock, perhaps not easily broken. At least that's what the master said when he called me Peter. And I've seen the Lord not right away, of course. I had chosen to stay with my best friends. We might as well be together in this mess I spread throughout the city. I told them we lost track of each other through that trial, that black night, that rich night. You know things look different at night time. I had to defend Jesus and he wouldn't allow it. My rule isn't of this world or else my servants would fight. That's the rumor of what he said. All right, no fighting. What was there to do? I'm not very sentimental, except of course, that night. By the time we hit midnight and things I got from bad to worse, I couldn't handle it anymore. I learned the scary trident and I said, I've never been a follower of Jesus. What I really wanted to do was to save my life as I could teach others later. You see, after three denials, I went. I had no more tears left when Mary of Magdalene told us that now the body had even been removed. I ran as fast as I could to check everything. And you know what? I'm like barged right in to find the burial clothes lying there. This was no abduction. What was it? It didn't make sense. Until it came where we were locked into our very power. She came, peace be with you. Was it the words? No, it was the presence that did it. A very great joy settled into each one of us. Peace be with you. Now there was a reason to live. This was the Lord. We didn't need to go by Mary's stories. Lord has come to us, all came, has come to all of us gathered there. The Lord has returned to us to restore us into his presence. New power, new presence, new deep relationship. I didn't have to brag boldly anymore about not leaving him or is not suffering. Even when the worst has happened, the Christ came to us, we have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. You might think that someone like myself doesn't deserve to see, because I'm Thomas. I'm the one who demanded not only to see, but also to touch. Perhaps you don't want to hear the voice of a doubter, but I'm more than that. I'm more than my doubts and questions. You see, I love Jesus. I was more ready than the others to make that trip back into the vicinity of Jerusalem, where the crowds actually started to stone Jesus. That Jesus, he had no fear. His presence inspired courage, so I spoke up loyally. Let us also go that we may die with him. The dying part, well, it turned out that Jesus was the master of life. Lazarus was raised. It was so clear. I knew for sure until he himself was killed, apparently willingly. It wasn't so clear at all. I was the one pointing out to Jesus that the teaching wasn't as self-evident as he seemed. We didn't know where he was going. He said he was on the way. What a way, what a life. I need to be sure. The others had tried to reassure me by saying that they had seen the Lord, but I'm no second in person. I want to know on my own. Is that so hard to want to be sure? Can you understand that? Jesus knew me and loved me, especially because of my usual big honest questions. He knew I hid nothing. So when he came to us once again, he approached me before I had opened my mouth and said, Thomas, I'm here, you may end your doubting. Then I knew this was my Lord. Here is the risen Christ. I have found my Lord and my God. Thomas, I have seen the Lord. We're in with our honest questions and wavering loyalty. 
and most of all, ordinary in the ways our relationship with Jesus kept changing shape. But the biggest change was recognizing and welcoming Jesus as our risen Lord. Jesus kept coming back and coming back with every parable, every sign, and then with every resurrection appearance to deepen our trust, to clarify out understanding and out of lack of understanding. I, John, have written so you will trust the risen Lord love for you. The Christ won't go let you go either. I wrote so you'll believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God. We have been with this Jesus. We have walked with this Jesus. We have questioned with this Jesus. We have we wrote to you about this Jesus. The Lord has come to us. We have seen the Lord. Have you seen the Lord? Hi, Partakers Sunday Schoolers. This is Miss B. Just want to let you guys know I truly miss you. I hope you miss me too. I can't wait to see you again. Want to remind you, as well as doing your schoolwork, don't forget to read your Bibles. And I want you guys to have a happy Easter, and I'm going to keep you in my prayers, and you keep me in yours. God bless you, and I love you.
Partaker's Children. Thank God for Partaker's Children. You did an excellent job this Sunday, and I'm sure that God is pleased. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for all of your efforts and all of your all of the things that you've done. We thank the parents, we thank the teachers, and we thank the pastor, and most of all, we thank God. God bless you all. Amen. Come on, give God praise for the awesome job that our children and young people did. Come on, under the magnificent leadership of our, come on, come on, our president of Christian education, our director of Christian education, Reverend Dr. Barbara Smith. Come on, let's give God praise for the outstanding teachers who lead them, Sister Gwen, Gwendolyn Ellis, uh, Deacon Reginald, Sir Reginald Ellis, uh, Sister Jerry Brown. You guys did an amazing job, and, and those of you who participated, and come on, just one more clap for the children, for their parents and the loved ones, and those of you who uh, supported them. I have the awesome responsibility of inviting those who are interested to join the Jesus crowd, to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your individual life. Wouldn't this be the perfect day? the day we celebrate the resurrection, for you to make the conscious decision to come on the right side of life. Being saved is an awesome thing. Being blood bought and born again does not match anything this world has to offer. And we are duty bound to at least extend the invitation in hopeful prayer that you will accept it. How can you be saved, you might ask? Well, the scripture reminds us that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can't do that with the government. You can't do that with the preacher. You can't even do that with church. But Jesus makes all things possible through the great sacrifice he made on the cross that you just saw referenced and celebrated. So how do you be saved? How do I become born again? How do I become a member of the body of Christ? It's as simple as this prayer. Repeat these words after me, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe your son Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day God raised him from the dead. And because I believe in my heart what I have just confessed with my mouth, I thank you, Lord, that I am saved. Thank you for saving me from this world. Thank you for saving me from myself. Thank you for saving me from an eternity in hell. I thank you for welcoming me into the family of faith, and I give my life to you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer with every bit of sincerity, welcome to the family of faith. Welcome to the body of Christ. And we'd like to invite you to become a, either a virtual or, or per, uh, you can come in person, you can do it physically or virtually, become a member of this local body of believers called Partakers. How do you do it? It's as simple as sending us an email to partakerschurch at outlook.com, expressing your interest to become one of us, generations, as we uh, seek to connect generations to Jesus, you can be a part of the great things that God is not only doing in the kingdom, but what he's doing in the local church called Partakers. I would be honored to serve as your pastor. We would love to have you as an addition to this already great body of believers. Amen? Amen. So we welcome you in the love of Jesus. Now the time has come for us to uh, pray. We're going to pray and seek to call on heaven, petition heaven on behalf of ourselves and on behalf of others. And so we're going to ask at this time that if there's someone that you know of who needs prayer, if it's you yourself, that you would type those names into the comment section if you're watching via Facebook and that you would do it in the chat section if you're watching via YouTube live. And so as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, we're lifting up our own sister, Michelle Cunningham, and the loss of her uncle, Cleophas Cunningham. Uh, we're lifting up Sister Barbara Abney, the wife of our own Deacon Harry Abney. We're still continuing to lift up uh, Little Lavelle Peanut Lee, the grandson of our own sister, Annette Lee. 
We're lifting up Mother Joyce Holloway and we're lifting up the entire Golden Girls Mother's Ministry. And of course, partakers, you know that we are always keeping you lifted up in prayer. You never have to worry about a day or a time going by when the partakers members are not being petitioned. Amen. We are petitioning heaven on your behalf constantly. And I believe there's some fruit as a result of the prayers that are being sent on your behalf. And so as you list those names, as those of you who are in the sanctuary with me, consider the names that are on your heart, in your mind, and in your spirit. Let us go to the throne of grace boldly with expectation that God already knows what we have need of before we ask, but excited that he's already answered the prayer. Let us go to God. Eternal God, our Father in heaven, Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. We bless your holy and most righteous name. Thank you for the opportunity and privilege to come before you, God, on this Resurrection Sunday on behalf of ourselves and all of the names and the situations that are being listed as we seek your face. We thank you, first and foremost, that you hear us when we pray. We thank you that we are your children and that we are saved by your amazing grace. And God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would first forgive us of our sins, create in us clean hearts. Oh God, renew a right spirit within us that we can continue doing your holy and righteous will. And now God, having settled that business and having received your forgiveness, we lay every person whose name has been called, typed, thought of, and even the names that we cannot remember at this time. And we ask you to look upon us all and have mercy upon us. We ask God in the name of Jesus that you would heal where healing, where healing is needed, that you will touch where a touch is needed, that you will save where salvation is needed, that you will bless where a blessing is needed, that you would provide where provision is needed. We give you full authority to have your total way in our total lives. From the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, you know what we stand in need of. And God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would be so kind as to address the needs, the issues, the sicknesses, the problems, the circumstances that we bring to your throne. God, you gave us the leeway to cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. And we thank you for caring. We thank you for receiving our prayers. And we thank you for answering our prayers according to your will, your word, and your way. Now, God, all we can do is turn it over to you by faith and continue to go on with our life, trusting that our prayers have been heard and that the need is already met, the problem is already solved, the issue is already Cross and said, it is finished. You were thinking about us. And so we are confident in our prayers to the only one who's still able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we can ask or think. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for giving your life for us. Thank you for God for dying on that cross and raising on resurrection ground on resurrection Sunday. And thank you, God, that you made a way. You cleared the path for our prayers to get to you without hesitation and without interruption and without human intercession. To God be the glory for all the things that he has done, is doing, and continues to do as we ask these and all things in your darling son Jesus' name. Let every heart that believes say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate like the prayer has been answered. Come on, give God glory, give God glory, give God glory. Thank you once again as we prepare to transition. If the Lord has moved upon any of you to uh, sow a seed into this ministry to give, there is a way that you can do it. Hallelujah. The Lord has so blessed this church to be able to function virtually, amen, and physically. And those of you uh, as we prepare to receive the Lord's offering uh, during our what would normally be our Sunday school hour, but it has been turned into a service for the youth that we have benefited from. <laughs> Amen. The Lord has moved upon your heart to give. There is a way you can do it. You can go to the church's website at www.partakerscb.org. 
click on the donate button. And from there you have three options. Two of them are online options. Number one being that you can give through Givelify by searching under Partakers Church Baptist. Secondly, you can give via the app Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -E, using the email address PCB, that's for Partakers Church Baptist, pcb.trustee at gmail.com. And then you can, if, if neither one of those suits your fancy, you can drop it in the mail. You can mail it to our physical location at 2550 South Littisdale Street, Detroit, Michigan, 4. 8217. Or if you happen to be in the neighborhood, the church got a drop box, y'all. You can just drop it in the drop box. Amen. And still get heaven's credit for your giving unto him. Amen. Let us bless the offering. God, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We pray that these gifts are pleasing to you for they are being given from cheerful hearts. We pray that you'll take these gifts and multiply these gifts and that they be used for your glory and towards your kingdom work. And then above the amount, God, over and above the amount, bless the heart of the giver, is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm getting this online thing down packed. I gave it online. Amen. God knows Sister Marva told me to put it in her hand. Amen. So, because I got a healthy distance from her, I ain't got to worry about her jumping on me. So I thank God, thank God, thank God. Amen. Thank you all for your gifts. And as we prepare to transition from uh, this, res this children and young adult and young folks resurrection celebration into uh, the worship service that takes place at 10 a.m., let me thank all of the guests, all of the visitors, all of the precious people of partakers, and those of you who have tuned in, we certainly appreciate your prayers your, and your participation in what has transpired thus far. Again, we give God praise. Come on, wherever you are, give God praise and give God praise for our children. Amen. They are often seen in a negative light within our community. We want to highlight the negative things they do. But when they decide to do a work for the Lord, we shouldn't be quiet at all. We should continue to encourage them. Amen, somebody. Parents, continue to encourage your children. How many of you know it's only what you do for Christ? That's the only thing that's going to last. And so keep your children close to Christ. Keep them in the Bible. Keep them participating in the events that go on in the local church. Amen. I don't want to see no parents if some, if by some unfortunate incident, something happens to a child and you're talking about, you want to have, you know, I've, I've, I've done funerals where we, unfortunately, children have, have lost their lives to gun and gang violence. And then we have to portray them as angels when they were hellions because we did not take the time out to teach them about the things of God. No, that's not gonna happen with our children. Would you declare that? Not on our watch. Hallelujah, Jesus, not on our watch. Our children will live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So thank you all for, the, for your time and for your attention. And as we prepare to transition into the worship service, we want to invite those of you who are watching back at 10 a.m. sharp. 10 a.m. sharp, we will begin our live broadcast of our Resurrection Sunday worship service. Amen. And for those of you who will be coming into the building, know that we are still practicing uh, according to what the CDC has recommended. We are practicing our social distancing we got our mascuses. We are sanitizing, amen, and social distancing. So, amen. Amen. And so uh, we will be back at 10 a.m. sharp. You got time to cook you a quick breakfast. Do whatever you got to do, but meet us back here and listen when you log back on. Share the experience. I'm sure there's somebody on your timeline who needs to hear about Jesus. And today the Lord has orchestrated such a time as this for us to talk about the great things he has done. So until then, God bless you. God keep you. See you in about 15 minutes. And until then, partake us forever. Peace out. See you in a bit.